Hi, um, my name is Mike, and I'm making this tutorial video to show how to install Amiga Workbench 3.9 uh, on my Amiga 2000. Let's see. For starters, let me move my tripod here a little closer, actually. Um, for starters, I've got a few things. Actually, we'll just go over the system real quick. Uh, for anyone who's familiar with me on Amiga.org or Ami Bay, um, this is my Amiga 2000. It's pretty heavily expanded. Uh, I've got uh, an 040 processor, a couple different uh, RAM boards, uh, Rapid Road, uh, Xsurf 100, GVP Spectrum, 8516 sound card, Cocolino, uh, Indivision ECS, uh, a few other things that I'm probably forgetting right now. Um, and it's all running uh, 3.9 with all of the latest Boin bags. And uh, that was why I wanted to make this video today was because and if people have had trouble installing the uh, the various Boin bags, so I wanted to show you guys the uh, easiest way how to do that. Um, let's see. I don't make a whole lot of videos, so. What the hell, right? Um, for starters, I've got four things here. Um, my Amiga OS 3.9 CD. My emergency recovery floppy disk, which the tools to make this disk are on the CD. I'll go over that a little more in a second. Uh, my utilities disk, which is all the stuff I want to load after I install the operating system. So this is going to be my Boeing bags, um, a few other tools. We'll show you that in a second as well. And a uh, Transcend 4 gigabyte CF. Uh, 4 gigabytes is pretty standard size for uh, you know most Amiga users. Uh, this is a 75X. Um, doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference the speed of the CF card. Um, I've got a 600X in my uh, in here now, and uh, it was really not any different. I'm sure maybe if I had a uh, faster SCSI interface, um, but I've actually you'll see I've got one of the uh, MechWare card readers on here. Um, the CF at the bottom is my uh, primary drive. Uh, that's an 8 gig CF uh, partitioned into uh, Workbench, work, documents, games, etc. The uh, SD card here above that is formatted to uh, FAT95, so if I have any large files I need to transfer uh, back and forth to my PC, um, I can do that easily. Just you know, drag and drop. Uh, you know, I pull the pull the SD card out of the Amiga, plug it into the PC, it auto detects, and then I plug it back into the Amiga, and it auto detects there. Uh, couldn't be easier. Um, so the first couple difficulties I had were. Uh, locating my OS 3.9 CD which of course it couldn't be anywhere useful um, like in any of that stack of boxes over there which you see a bunch of those are labeled Amiga software no it was actually uh, in this big Amiga 2000 box down here which was the last place I was expecting to find it so that was a pain in the ass um, put your stuff where you can find it <laughs> you can't tell already I'm really OCD so um, the uh, recovery disk. Um, the tools to make that are on the CD. Um, I noticed just now when I went to make this disk uh, that it actually pulls some of the files from your existing setup if you're already running 3.9. So rather than just uh, you know straight up copying uh, files off of the OS 3.9 CD, it copied some files off of my hard drive, which uh, I ran into a problem there because. Um, some of my files were uh, more recent and larger than what is on the uh, CD, so I had to move things around to make enough room on the floppy drive or on the uh, floppy disk. Um, last thing is my utilities CD, and uh, let's go ahead and pop that in. I want to show you what's on there before I get started. I'm sorry if this video is already a little uh, long and rambling. It is uh, 11 o'clock at night. I just came back from roller derby practice and uh, I'm a little tired and sweaty and ready for a shower in bed, but I'd said I would make a video, so here I am. Um, let's go ahead and see if I can 
zoom this in on the monitor. I'll have to find a way to position this a little better in a minute. Um, let's see. So that I can get to my mouse with the uh, tripod still here. Uh, maybe I'll just set it like this. Let's see. Let's just go ahead and figure out how I'm going to do this now. So, I'm just going to show you using my favorite directory utility, uh, Durwork. Of course, then I just hit the tripod with the leg in my chair as soon as I... So I'm definitely not a professional. Um, in any case, uh, I think now I can reach the mouse. My head's not in the way of the camera. Let me just show you real quick what's on this CD. Um, hopefully the video quality won't get too butchered by YouTube uh, when I upload it. Um, but this has got uh, Boing Bags, uh, Boing Bag 1, Boing Bag 2, Boing Bag 3 and 4, which were just recently, uh, since the last time I installed this, it's actually been a while since I installed it, but it looks like they combined the two archives for 3 and 4. So um, I guess we'll see what happens when I go to install that. I have eyebrows on here, uh, the latest version of the Peter K. Icon Library, um, which is, uh, you know, downloaded from Aminet. Um, the installer for LHA, uh, Archiver, uh, Miami DX, uh, Magic User Interface 3.8, MUI, or MUI, uh, and the uh, latest version of the Picasso 96 uh, drivers. Uh, I'm probably not going to install all this stuff on this video. Maybe I'll do a, uh, another video uh, further uh, at a later date to show how to configure Miami. Um, I have no idea get what you pay for and you're not paying anything anything for this so um let's see oh, no, I just clicked on. oh I suppose I could show you a quick speed thing with uh, eyebrows on here but that's really not that important um let me actually just go ahead and close out of everything here uh are you sure you want to quit yeah 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 like that. Um, I think if I had anything else I wanted to show you while I still had this system up. Um, but what I'm going to do, let's see. Let's pull it back a little bit. I'll go ahead and cut it off. I'm going to pull this guy out. for this demonstration. Um, I just reformatted this uh, as a FAT95 or as a FAT32 on my PC. I can't remember if that was the right format or not. I just I wanted to go ahead and wipe it out and make sure that it was blank. It did have stuff on there before so I didn't want to have anything uh, interfering with uh, my demonstration here tonight. So I'll go ahead and put that new one in. Put my recovery floppy in. Fire it up. Oh, so it might have helped if I'd taken that CD out. Not that the Amiga is going to boot off of a CD anyway. Let's see. Probably didn't like that I just hit that button just now. Oh, there we go. Thank you, thank you. Get my CD back. So you can see it's now starting to boot off of the uh, 3.9 recovery floppy disk. Let me uh, zoom this bad boy out and get it over towards the screen a little more. It's been a long time since I even booted off of a floppy disk. Some 
polling. The, uh, Confused if I having the wrong uh, CD in there when it tried to boot the first time. Let's see. There it goes. My CD drive is a little slow. I really don't use those very often, so I don't really care a whole lot. So I say maybe I should reshoot this whole video and not make a bunch of stupid mistakes while I'm doing this, but I don't care. Maybe I will have some coffee. Oh. see it's auto adjusting my monitor looks like it actually um, picked up because I made the recovery floppy using my updated Picasso drivers looks like it actually or uh, spectrum yeah it's actually using a 24-bit or 16-bit graphic mode here nice very nice okay um, so this is the uh, boot screen from the uh, emergency boot floppy disk. Um, from here, uh, since I've got my new uh, the 4 gig CF in there, uh, I would want to run HD Toolbox off of the emergency disk. I'm really making this a lot harder. It seem a lot harder than it actually is. So you can see it, uh, it just scanned the bus. It found a GVP SCSI device. And it's scanning the LUNs. Um, with the card reader, it uh, actually, because it supports all of those um, multiple LUNs, um, you know, because it supports, uh, I can use multiple cards at the same time. Uh, I know it's probably your average user just installing this on an Amiga 1200 or whatnot is not going to not going to have uh, all these extra options here um, so let's go ahead and install this floppy uh, install the drive here um, we'll do a reconfiguration drive name PC card flash yeah who cares um, install do you want to proceed yes so this is just the process of uh, setting up the new uh, four gigabyte uh, CF card. So now that I have it installed, we would go ahead and partition it. Um, default partition sizes. Um, if you wanted to change it from uh, FFS from fast file system to uh, you know PFS or um, you know any other uh, custom file systems. Um, Let's see. Normally, I would I would create, you know, a smaller partition for workbench. You know, this is all just drag and drop. Um, you know, we'll say 500 megabytes for workbench. Um, let's call that partition name DHO. Um, oh yeah, I don't even 
has an option to res restore to default setup here. Um, it's called the second one DH1. And let's shrink that down to one gigabyte. And then let's call this last one DH2. Because I know most of you guys like to play games on your system. So we'll create a 500 meg partition for workbench. Uh, one gig partition for work um, and then everything left over we'll use that uh, the remaining 2.3 gigs we'll uh, make that games or whatever um, let's see it's already picking up I could, if I could if I wanted to add another file system uh, what did it put on the recovery disk here nothing nothing useful um, I would have to copy PFS on here or SFS if I wanted to do that manually. Um, we'll just cancel out all that crap because that's not the point of this uh, video here. So, um, we'll st you, so you boot off the floppy disk, you pop in the recovery CD, the, uh, you, you boot off the emergency floppy disk, you pop in the CD, um, you partition your hard drive, uh, go ahead and save this. Uh, we're just going to use all the default parameters here. I think that should work fine. Um, I know uh, in some cases, let's see, you might need to change the uh, mask or the max transfer. Um, let's see, oh, do we want to use directory cache? A little late now. Um, you know, I know some, some people have uh, problems with FFS. Uh, you know, it. it Reco uh, recovering uh, damaged partitions and whatnot. I typically use PFS on my uh, main 8 gig CF um, and I researched ad nauseum uh, the correct mask and max transfer and all that um, but I think the default values are fine um, file system block size you can go in there and, and tweak these parameters if you want to try to you know maximize performance um, I think with PFS uh, there was actually only one block size I could use, or it was like you could change it, but it wouldn't actually change. Um, so, three partitions. I think we already saved that. We'll just save it again to get out of there. Um, and I think, let's see. Let's go ahead and exit. do to get those to show up now. Let's see. I think I need to reboot it again. Let's make sure they're saved. Like I said it has been a, quite a while since I did this. Let's go ahead and give it the old three finger salute. Um, let it come back up, and I'm hoping that it will see the partitions that I just created on that new uh, CF. Almost well, like a damn learning experience for me. It's been so long since I did this. starting to boot off of the floppy disk. I'm not going to pan it around every time. Um, not probably with that recoverable alert. This is probably because of one of my updated libraries that it threw on there. One of the Picasso 96 things. Oh. Oh, yeah. My, I didn't take it out, did I? My CD drive is just old and slow. Maybe at some point in the future, they'll uh, somebody will come up with a way to make your Amiga able to boot directly off of a CD, um, like a CD uh, CD32 or the CDTV can. There's a few hacks for that floating around, but I don't care enough to look into it.
Okay, oh, there we go. There's the three new partitions. DHO, DH1, DH2. I keep right, I keep right clicking in the middle of the screen because I, I normally use uh, magic, uh, magic menu and everything. Uh, get that out of the way. All right. Yeah, geez, I'm not used to this. Let's go ahead and format these three partitions. Volume name. Oh my gosh, this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. Workbench. I wonder if I can just do a regular format or a quick format. We can call it Workbench 3.9. Whatever, doesn't matter. Quick format, good enough. Beautiful. All right, let's let's do let's try to do these really quick. Uh, DH1 uninitialized work quick format DH2 God games. Get rid of this. Put trash can on there. I forgot about that. I don't need a damn trash can on each partition. Use directory cache. I don't think it makes a difference for uh, uh, CF cards. I don't think it speeds anything up like it would with a hard drive. Um, and again, this is you know this is all fast file system FFS stuff, uh, which I never had a problem with. You know, I, I really, you know, I know some people will you know hate it. Um, you know, if you're using something bigger than four gigabytes, you should probably pretty much definitely use uh, PFS or uh, SFS, but. You know, FFS built into the operating system works, you know, works fine, too. Um, games format. Do you really wish to format? Yes. All right, so. To change my memory card here in a second. Um, so now, on the CD, so from your... Uh, uh, from your screen here, you would now uh, boot off the CD, OS 3.9, OS 3.9 installation. Click here, folks. Nothing, uh, not rocket science. So used to installing Windows. <laughs> Thank you for buying Amiga OS 3.9. I did actually buy it. This is not a pirated disc. This is an official, legit. Let's see. So we're going to choose the option for OS 3.9 full installation, full installation over OS 3.0 or empty hard drive because it is an empty hard drive. Um, some of the other options are uh, update over 3.5. I really don't like any of the update options. You know, honestly, I would rather. You know, I, I definitely recommend. Uh, you know, starting from a fresh hard drive. You know, without any of a whole bunch of like years worth of accumulated crap uh, on there. Um, you would want to run this again to install the internet software, to install uh, Genesis, and uh, a web. Um, I don't even know what the CD-ROM driver does. You can see I don't didn't need to install anything special for my CD-ROM. Um, this was the option to create the emergency disk that I used earlier right there at the top. Um, but we're going to do OS 3.9, full installation, proceed. This program lets you install release 3.9 on a hard drive. Proceed. Uh, oh my gosh, I don't care. What is the agreement? Blah, 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 blah. Yes, we will accept it. Oh, yeah, wow, it's got sound effects, people cheering. Proceed. Let's see, I hope this is all showing up okay on the uh, camera screen. It'd be a real damn tragedy if uh, none of this was recorded, but I see that it is. I'm not doing this again. So, and it asks you uh, on which partition should it be installed. Get that chunk out of the way. Um, I'm going to install it on DHL. Workbench 3.9, proceed. Gives you the uh, option for language, English, proceed. You, of which printer drivers do you want to install? I have installed. I don't care. I never print anything on my Amigas. Um, that stuff's all outdated anyway. Which key map should be installed? American. Would you like to install the new OS 3.9 backdrops to your presets drawer? Make sure you have more than 10 megabytes left. Hold me back. Yeah, let's go ahead and get this.
This should go pretty fast now. It's just copying directly from the uh, CD drive to the uh, CF card. But it's uh, copying a lot of stuff here. Time for more coffee. Until three o'clock in the morning, all the time. If I didn't have that, I wonder if I can position this a little closer. Just look at the screen to see. Let's see. This uh, monitor, by the way, it's a uh, Dell two zero zero seven FPB. I believe is the full model name. Um, I got it uh, certified refurbished off Amazon.com for like. 89 bucks. Um, never really liked using widescreen monitors with my Amiga since so very rarely are you going to find anything on an Amiga that's you know properly formatted for a wide widescreen display. Um, you know, especially old games and stuff, they're all set for a 4.3 aspect ratio display. Um, so this was the biggest 4.3 aspect ratio screen I could find. Uh, you know, without paying a small fortune. Um, and I think it's a, I think it's got a great display. I mean, you can uh, you know you get some idea of how well it. Uh, Displays my Amiga output um, using a, you know, I typically use either the uh, one of the Indivision ECS screen modes or one of the uh, Picasso 96 screen modes through my uh, uh, Spectrum card. Um, looks great on all of them. Uh, the monitor also has um, uh, composite uh, input, which I, I I assume would work on the Amiga with the Amiga composite output. I haven't tried it. Also has a S video input. Um, I. Uh, Added this sound bar here. Um, oh gosh, what is this read write error? I got a scratch on my CD. It obviously worked its way past that. Let's see, I got that CD in. When did OS 3.9 come out? Early, early 2000s. 2000. No, I guess it came out in the late. Came out in the late 90s. Here's why I'd have to go onto Wikipedia because I can't remember anything anymore. I'm gonna say I picked it up sometime around the very early 2000s. I got out of the Amiga uh, for about 10 years uh, after that. Um, all of my hard drives crashed simultaneously, um, taking with them years of data, uh, which just frustrated me to the point that I just threw my hands up and had to walk away for a while. Um, still have some of those old hard drives. I always uh, tell myself I'll send them to a data recovery place, and get my old. Uh, mod collection back and my demos. I, I don't think a, a data recovery place is going to know, know what the hell to do with an Amigo hard drive, but maybe someday. So you can see this is still copying. Um, I probably shouldn't have told it to copy all that extra stuff because we don't really need that for the purposes of this video. Um, copying files, boy, it's like watching paint dry. You sit here and watch it. This is why normally, uh, you know, I would get up and work on something else. Uh, you know, if you saw anything about when I had my pan the pan the camera around the office here, I got no shortage of projects. Um, there's some big old dinosaur over here that somebody gave me that I need to fix. Uh, all these works. Oh, look, there's my there's my spare Amiga 2000 down there, and uh, a uh, uh, shredder because apparently the company IT guy I'm also the uh, Shredder repair person and everything else. Um, I hook all the navigation systems up in all of our trucks. I got a million projects. The server room is in the other room. You don't need to see that. That's more computers. Where are they at? Oh, more stuff I'm working on over here. This bad boy still copying files. Okay, so that was a pretty novel idea. I just had to actually stop the recording uh, while <clears throat> uh, it was copying. It went from 45% uh, uh, to 90%. Um, it, uh, you know, the 3.9 install shows a couple, you know, pictures, uh, you know, nothing really too special. Um, then it says, uh, your system was apparently started with your emergency disk. Would you like to install the CD-ROM driver and graphics card drivers? Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit install. So hopefully this won't uh, 
that last install process uh, while I had the uh, camera pause was probably 20 minutes or so, um, give or take. Uh, you know, and note to self, don't install all of the uh, optional extra stuff uh, during a uh, demo. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it seemed like where, where I had messed up before was that I should have uh, powered up the system with the uh, 3.9 CD and and the floppy drive installed at, in it at the same time. Um, so that was my mistake. Uh, one other thing I didn't go over uh, was in HD Toolbox, uh, you know, one of the other parameters is to uh, set the number of buffers um, for each uh, new partition. Um, I didn't even look at what the default was. It was probably 80 or 50 or 100 or something. Um, you can always go back and change that. I just wanted to point that out for maybe somebody that uh, has never installed Workbench uh, before to, you know, that that's one of the parameters they might want to adjust is the uh, number of buffers. Obviously, the more buffers you give it, the better your performance, the more memory it'll consume. So it's a trade-off. Uh, you know, if you have something like one of the new ACA uh, accelerators, you know, with 128 mega memory built in, you know, um, not so much a big deal, um, but you know, older systems maybe you know you kind of kind of want to balance. Um, so uh, please insert your boot disk into the drive you've booted from, and then click proceed. If the disk is already in the drive, just click proceed. Working on installation. The installation of release 3.9 is now complete. To enable release 3.9, you must reboot your computer. Please remove the floppy disk. That was amazing that uh, this floppy disk didn't have any errors, but uh, my poor 3.9 CD must have a little scratch on it somewhere. Should clean that up. Alright, so. Proceed. And it should now reboot from the uh, 4 gig card. Pulling the bus. I feel like this card was a lot faster when I used it in my. Uh, where did I get this card? The 75x. You know what? It came to me for free. It came came free with something else. I should take back what I said about the 75x card. This definitely does seem like it's slower. second. I swear I didn't have these problems with the case with my other cards. video while I work this uh, uh, probably operator error issue out here. Let me give it one more second while it pulls the uh, I had something dumb like the uh, max transfer set wrong or something. Maybe I do need to set that. I uh, will get right back to you. Okay, you know what? I made a really dumb noob error, and I realized even before it was finished booting what I did wrong. Um, a hard drive uh, HD toolbox, uh, my uh, workbench partition that I created. Forgot to check the fucking box that says bootable. So, that, uh, I should have known better. 
Probably should have gotten some sleep before I tried to make a video here, but in any case, um, so that's set now. Let's see. I don't think I'll have to reinstall anything. That should take automatically. Let's go ahead and reboot now and see if it uh, boots off of that 4 gig. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's booting, booting right up. I need to look into why it's popping up that error. I think it's a Picasso driver. So here we go, booting into my fresh 3.9 installation on this uh, 4 gig uh, CF card. Um, I feel really defenseless using this thing without my uh, my magic menu and uh, my directory utility and everything else you know that's what I really like about the Amiga is just how customizable they are and uh, you know I've been known to spend many an hour uh, staying up late customizing my system and fine-tuning it exactly how I want it um, first off let's get rid of this damn back uh, window backdrop there I hate that um, so before you install anything else, um, you should actually let's do the web tools because you need those to fully install the Boeing bags because the Boeing bags update the web tools. I hope this all makes sense. It doesn't seem counterintuitive or anything. Um, let's go ahead and line these. Uh, some icons here on the screen. Alright, on the Amiga OS 3.9 CD, um, this is probably the mistake that some people have had before uh, with uh, some of the Boeing bags, is that the Boeing bags update uh, the uh, web tools, and the web tools aren't installed by default, so you need to go back in here again and uh, come back and at this time select install internet software surf the internet who came up with the cheesy graphics uh, where would you like to install the tools this internet sure good enough hopefully this doesn't take too long it's just installing genesis uh, um, a web, which is I can't stand that browser. Most <laughs> crashes anyway, but what is it? Terrible. Be nice if somebody would update eyebrows, but uh, I think Amiga Mail or something and install some email program. Um, a few other things. Updated MeTCP. You can see what it's uh, up showing there on the screen. It is necessary that an assign is created. English version. Do you want to install the fonts? Yes, yes, yes. Really, this is just uh, a whole lot of click uh, next, yes, yes, next, proceed, yes, yes, next. You know, select what language you want and whatnot. I assume if you're watching this video, you're probably going to be installing it in English, but you know what they say about uh, not to assume things. 50% done. It's going pretty fast now. That, uh, that first install did take quite a while with all, those, uh, all that extra media, all the extra pictures. Let's hop over here for a second. Backdrops, but 60% done. Kind of, you kind of want to like start customizing things already. Um, go into your tools, get whatever commodities you use. Um, 
by default. So I've heard that this unarc program um, is actually uh, doesn't work. Um, I wouldn't know. I never use it anyway. I always use. I always just uh, pop down straight to the command line to uh, unarchive things. Um, but they said that the original version of 3.9 that it doesn't work, and you have to install the boing, uh, the first boing bag for it to uh, for it to work. Let's see how the install's going. Oh, fix fonts. Yes. 90% complete. Amiga Mail. Yes, sure. I don't think I've ever used it. Back in the day, I used to use Yam. That was a nice program. Okay, so done. Done, 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 done. Um, pop this disk out. I'm going to go ahead and reboot it again because uh, I want that install for AMI TCP to take effect. You can never reboot too many times. Pull out my Amiga Utilities disk now and uh, now that I've got uh, everything installed, we can start doing the uh, boing bags. Throw that in there. I always. Uh, on my fully customized system, I use keyboard shortcuts for everything, and I'm going to be like, oh, why isn't my shell window opening? <laughs> Control S. What is it on my Linux box? Alt Control T. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I... It's funny using a basic system again. Um, in any case, um, let's see. Shell. All right, CD. Oh, it did. Oh, it didn't name it. What did you name it? You didn't name it CD, oh, uh, CD0? Let's see, I gotta wait for it to come up again. There was, just, there was an icon for it on the desktop, and I ejected the, I ejected the disk without even looking at it. So, um, for my Amiga Utilities, the first thing I'm going to want is the uh, LHA. Uh, so this was everything that I had uh, downloaded earlier, the Boeing Bags, LHA, Eyebrows, MUI, Miami DX. So LHA.run. Uh, all these things you can just get on Google. Um, really, my name is right protected, cancel. Uh, all these things, like I said, you just go on Google, you go to Google and type in "download Amiga Boing bags," and it'll be the uh, the first link that comes up. Everything else is on uh, AmiNet. Um, so there we go. We just copy lha.run to ram ram dir uh, lha.run, and then. LHA 68040, so we'll say a copy LHA underscore 68042C colon LHA. There we go, so CD, CD. Let's make sure it's there. LHA, beautiful. So all I did was uh, extract the uh, LHA archiver uh, and copied it into my uh, C directory, so now I can uh, from anywhere in the shell. 
can type in LHA and now it's available. Um, so, now the next thing I'm going to want to do is uh, the uh, Boeing bags. Let's see if I can do this to that. I'm having to change, put another memory card in my camera here. CD uh, Amiga Utilities Disk. Durr. Um, I always thought List and Durr were funny. I know on a PC, uh, you know, back in the DOS days, uh, the output that you got from the Amiga List command was a lot more. Uh, uh, familiar to what you got on a PC in uh, DOS, and a lot of times I would rename uh, list to dir and dir to list, so that when I typed dir, it would give me uh, this output, and when I typed list, or when I typed dir, it would give me the list output. That probably didn't make any sense at all. Um, there's personal preference. Um, so, LHA dash X X uh, Boing bag three nine dash one dot LHA two RAM. So I'm just extracting the um, contents of uh, Boing Bag. No file extracted. Did I spell it wrong. Dumb errors that uh, shouldn't be having. Let's see. Did I mess up when I burn my disk somehow? Take one second again while I figure out what other dumb error I'm making. Okay, yeah, I was totally making a dumb mistake. I was using the wrong uh, uh, sequence of the command. Uh, just, just using the typing it in like I would on my uh, one of my other my Linux machines. Um, so LHA Boing bag three nine dash one dot LHA RAM. And now you can see it's extracting. So from where I had it on the uh, CD, I just uh, first I installed the LHA command, and now I'm extracting the contents of Boing Bag One into the uh, RAM disk. Um, if you didn't have enough memory to uh, extract the entire contents, um, you could, for example, extract it to your work partition or uh, you know even your uh, your games partition. You know you saw I made that great big games partition. Um, I've occasionally done that before, you know, when you got a great big file and you need somewhere to stick it, just, you know, stick it on whatever biggest partition you have. Um, you know, just go back and clean it up later, obviously. How big? 
actually was this archive. Oh yeah, you can see uh, Boing Bag uh, 1 was uh, 5, 5 and a quarter megabytes. So, you know, not big in the grand scheme of shoot. I, my, my phone takes pictures that are, you know, bigger than 5 uh, megabytes. <laughs> But uh, you know, on an old uh, on an old Amiga, that's a that's a pretty good sized file. It looks like Boing Bag three and four are going to be actually even bigger than that. Uh, Boing Bag two is only uh, two meg. I feel like I should pause it, and you know what happens as soon as I pause it, it's going to start. It's going to be done. And now it's done. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, now I have this uh, extracted Boing Bag 3.9-1 in my uh, RAM disk. And um, we'll go ahead and... Oh, it doesn't come with manuals? Why did I never read those? You see how ADD I am? Oh, bench trash guide. I don't care. Um, installation. Really, again, not rocket science. We're going to install Boing Bag 1, 2, 3, 4 all in a row um, before we put anything else on this system. So you saw what I did. I installed uh, I installed Workbench. I fixed my dumb error of making the Workbench partition not bootable. Um, I installed the uh, internet tools. Uh, so here we go. Let's uh, let's do this. Where do you want to install it? Workbench 3.9. Very important. This program installs Boing Bag 1 for Amiga OS 3.9 on your hard disk. Older files will be overwritten. I don't care. Yes, let's do it. Uh, which languages should be installed? I think English is by default. It doesn't even give me an option to check English. Let's see. Oh, it needs a CD ROM. Good thing I didn't put it away. I'll pause this in a second because you don't need to see if this install procedure is going to take anywhere close to as long as that other one did. It's going to take it a minute to recognize that I just put the CD-ROM in there. Let's see. I'm just waiting for the icon to come up. There we go. Amigo S3.9. So now I know the CD is in there. Oh, and look, I found it anyway. I always love that about Amigo OS, how it uh, automatically would uh, detect disk changes. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this now. You don't know, you can see what's going on here. So um, that install took about five minutes, uh, maybe a little less. Um, and uh, it comes around. The installation point bag one for Amiga OS 3.9 is now complete. To enable the updated files, you must reboot your Amiga, remove all the disks from the drives. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see you again and proceed to reboot. Let's see. comes up pretty fast to figure out what that recoverable error is. Um, it's probably something in the... I bet I know what it is. Ed, startup sequence. Oh no, you know this doesn't have the... Gosh. Oh, I 
guess this don't come in until... Okay, I'll, I'll deal with it later. Um, camera's wasting, and you are most definitely bored if you are still watching this. Amiga Utilities disc. Boom. I should have copied all these to the hard drive so I wouldn't have to keep putting this disc in. Let's throw that in. So I get smarter in my old age, huh? Copy everything to the hard drive first. As soon as it uh, pulls up utilities, window show all files, window clean up by column. Point bag one out of here because we already did that. So on the work partition. Go ahead and copy everything else to the work partition. I guess I didn't need to copy LHA because I already have that. It's a pretty fair amount of stuff. Let me pause the video again. Okay, so the copy is done. Back in the shell. Work colon dir. LHA dash X X Boing bag three nine dash two dot LHA RAM. This was a lot smaller. Okay, done archiving. Going back three two installation. We're gonna get through this. Uh, yeah, I think you can already predict what's gonna happen here. This program installs Point Bag two. It can be used to update version three point nine. Proceed. Intermediate novice or expert. Whatever, good enough. Where do you want to install it? In the workbench partition. Very important. Uh, there we go. Here's where the ROM update kicks in. With, uh, with the CD again. This is going to be the right. Oops. leave that CD in there now, now that I copied everything on my utilities onto the uh, work partition. I always like to close all those extra windows, free up that little, that little bit of memory that they use. So here we go with uh, another install. Um, we're going to go ahead and pause the video again because you don't really need to see all this, uh, all the different things that updates.